So let me remind you that A stands for a finite set called the alphabet. Then you build the space of configurations. Then you have the shift. So given a configuration x and an integer n, and x is a new configuration which takes the value at the point m given by x and plus m. This is the shift action. And then I define a cellular automaton from two shift spaces. Also B is a finite set to be a map to be a map such that there exists a finite subset of Z, which is called the memory set, and the map mu from the, the so-called patterns with support M, so all the maps defined only on M with value in A, so mu sends this set of patterns into B, such that you recover the map tau in this way. Tau of x, this is a configuration in B of z. I have to tell you what is the value at the element n of z. Then you recover this way. So you take your configuration x, you translate by n according to the shift map, and then you have an element here. Then you restrict it to M, you project, okay, you take the restriction to M, and this gives rise to an element in A power M, because it's a map from M to A. And then you apply mu, which is your local defining map, and this is an element in B. And this is exactly the value which defines tau of x at the point N. Okay? So we have seen a bunch of examples. Let me just remind you the, the important theorem, the so-called Curtis Hedlund theorem, which characterizes such uh, maps. So tau as before from a power z to b power z is a cellular automaton if and only if the following two conditions hold. The first one uh, is that tau is equivariant, that is, it commutes with the shift, so let me repeat you what it means. So if you take tau of nx, so you first, you take the configuration x, you translate it with n, you use the shift, and then you apply tau, then it's the same thing as first applying tau, and then translating it here. Okay, so you have a, a commuting square. You have tau here, you have another copy of a power z, another copy of b power z here. You go from here to here by the shift. You go here by here to the same shift, and here you have again tau. And this is the, the, <coughs> the equivalence. And the other condition is that tau is continuous. So you equip this space and this space with so-called pro-discrete topology, which is the um, product topology when you take the discrete topology on your alphabet A and your alphabet B, respectively. Okay? Okay. And then we also spoke about shifts. So if you have, or subshift, if you have a subset A, of, of the configuration space is a subshift provided that it is closed. So with respect to this topology and 
and equivariant and um, invariant under the shift invariant and shift invariant so that is if you have a configuration in this space then all the translated belong to x for every element in c okay so this is upshift so uh, just as to warm up again I this is would be the last review so for example if you take tau of x if you apply tau to a subshift of x, this will be a subshift here so if x is a subshift in a power z you apply tau which is a, a cellular automaton then you get a sub in you get a subshift here Okay, because the image uh, will be invariant by equivariance and will be uh, the image of a continuous by a continuous map of a compact space will be compact and this is Hausdorff so it will be closed and so it is a subshift okay just for review six now I want to in to speak about the garden of Eden theorem but I will first introduce some machinery which is given by the concept of entropy. Let me just uh, let, let me remind since I spoke about this yesterday, if you have a subshift X, let me denote by Ln of X to be the set of all words. such that there exists a configuration in X such that X of I is equal to AI for I equal to 1, 2, up to N. Okay? So, what it means? You have to think of an element here in A power Z. You can look it at X0, X1, X2, x minus 1 and so you can represent it as a bi infinite word okay which goes to the infinite on the right as n increases so with the in positive integers and goes to the to the most left when n decreases so it becomes uh, with the in negative integers okay so you have a bi infinite word and so ln of x is a set of all words of length n if you take an interval of length and all the words, different words that you can see. Of course, this is major, the, the cardinality of this set is majorized by the cardinality of A power N, which will be the case for at the very beginning. But then if X is proper, as we will see, we will see soon, then it starts to decrease. Okay? Okay. So now I want to introduce you the concept of entropy. So, it is usually one refers, one thinks of entropy for a subshift, but it will be useful to consider entropy for any subset of A power Z. So, if I have X, which is a subset of A power Z, I, I stress the fact is any subset, we can define the entropy of such X to be the limb soup when N tends to infinity of the ratio between the logarithm of the cardinality of Ln of X divided by N. So I repeat, you look at all possible words in uh, X, by infinite words, you look at all possible um, n subwords of length n. You take the cardinality of this, you take the logarithm, you quotient by n, and then you take the limb soup. Okay. So th this number it cl clearly is between zero and log a log of the cardinality of A and uh, for example 
let me see, example, the entropy of A power Z is equal to log A. Because in this case, ln of x, you have all possible words, and these are uh, their cardinality is exactly the cardinality of a power n. If you take the logarithm n and n simplify, and you get this constant number, log of a. Okay. And uh, so now, let me give you two facts important. The first one tells that cellular automata do not increase the um, entropy. So when you apply, um, when you apply a, a cellular automaton, then the entropy is, is not increasing. So let me state it in this way. OK. So let tau be a cellular automaton, cellular automaton, and x in a power z, then, let me write it here, the entropy of tau of x is less or equal to the entropy of x. Okay, so the entropy of the image is less or equal than the entropy of the source. Okay, so let's see how do we prove it. Okay, set y to be the image of x, which is clearly a subset of b power z. And suppose that tau has me a memory which is something like that. So maybe I should have mentioned before, when you have a cellular automaton, so defined by these two data, so this set M, which is called a memory set and mu, which is a local defining map, then if you take a larger m, an m prime, which contains m, and you define mu prime accordingly, as I said yesterday, so let me repeat it here, it's important. If, if I have something like that, then you can define mu prime from a mu prime to b by mu prime of y to b mu y restricted to m. Then this data with m prime and mu prime define the same cellular automaton. You have to think, the cellular automaton is a local rule which tells you, I look at some values only in a finite number of uh, neighboring points and then I declare what is the new state in the position m. Okay? So if I look at the three important ones, if I look at 10 more, it doesn't change. It, it only depends on the three ones that I choose. Okay? So it is not restrictive to suppose that m is an interval. Okay? You don't, maybe these are not all essential, but those which give the real value are contained here and not others. Okay? So this is just the window which suffices to check for defining your cellular atom. So it is important that I can keep it, take it as an interval and of course I, I, I keep it symmetrical for uh, convenience. Okay. Then, so let's, I, I claim that tau induces a map which I called tau, which I can call tau n from L n plus 2m of x into L n of y as follows. So let's suppose I take a word of length 1 and 0 
and here I have n, well, 1 to n, here I have my 1 minus m, and here I have n plus m. Okay? Maybe, yes, 1 minus m. Okay? So, if this is a, this is a configuration x and this is tau of x, whatever is in this word here, which belongs to here, it's a block here, then if I take the, the map tau at, applied to x, well, I know for sure what are the values of tau of x here, between 1 and n. Why? Because if I'm here to know the value at 1, I need just to know what happens on the m points on the left and on the m points on the right. So I can define tau of x. I can do the same for all these. And when I arrive here, what is the value here? I have to know what are the values m to the left and m to the right. So all the data which I have in this huge, uh, larger block determine whatever is the image of this smaller block. Do you agree? OK? Let me repeat once more. The value of a point depends on a neighborhood, minus m from one side and plus m to the other side. OK? So if I want to know what are the values on an interval, I should take this larger interval here so that to know this point here, I know I need this part to have the value in 2, I take this, to take value 3 here, and when I'm here, it will be again this interval here. So this determines a map of this sort. And clearly, this map is surjective. Note that here I have y. So all, all possible uh, ma uh, words of length uh, n in the image comes from something of this sort by construction. Just it's, it's very simple, OK? OK, so because of this, I have that the cardinality ln of y is majorized by the cardinality of ln plus 2m of x, OK? Just because you have a subjective map. Hmm? Now, this map. This quantity here, I majorized in this way. I take ln of x times a power 2m. OK? I, I, only, I only think of those configurations here. These are all the maps defined on the interval n plus 2m, which of the words coming from x. So I have, I normalize, I, uh, I majorized, I only take here the words in, uh, uh, which belongs to the language of x, and here I take any possible letter. Okay, so I extend these words in all possible ways. I take any uh, letter in a here, I have m possibilities here, m possibilities here, so everything is gives rise to such an inequality. Okay? Is it clear? This is brute um, majorization. Okay, now let's take uh, logarithms. So ln of y is majorized by log of ln of x plus 2m log of a. Okay? And let me divide by n. I divide by n here, I divide by n here, and divide by n here. So now, when I take the limb soup, this tends to limb soup. When I take the limb soup, this tends to the entropy of y, which is indeed the entropy of tau of x, 
you just call tau of xy. This is this tends to the entropy of x by definition in both cases. And here you see m is fixed. Is this, it, it, it is related to the size of the cellular automaton, which is fixed. And this is constant. So everything tends to zero. So entropy of y is less or equal than entropy of x. And this completes the proof of this easy proposition. OK? Yes. Here? Uh, there, we can replace uh, n uh, by n minus 2, 2 m. Yeah. Ah, OK. The thing, uh, yeah. Directly. OK, I agree. OK, thanks. This is a nice point. Yeah, of course. OK. And now I want to prove another property of, of entropy which is the following. Suppose that I have a subshift now. So I, I write subshift. So what is important also that it is closed now, subshift. Suppose I have a subshift, which is proper, which is containing, so it, is, it cannot be equal. Then the entropy of x is strictly less than the entropy of the full shift, which is the logarithm of the cardinality of A. OK? So as, as it will come from the proof, we will prove actually a more general thing. Namely, let me first uh, see what we arrive and then what we will prove more generally. So now x strictly contained in a power z means actually is equivalent by the pro discrete topology by topological argument that there exists n0 such that L n0 of x is strictly contained in, in, let's say, how can I say? The cardinality of ln0 of x is less than, let's write to say, is less than or equal the cardinality of, of a and 0 minus 1. OK? So let me repeat. If you have a subshift which is proper, if you look at words, at some time, uh, some time, you should find a word which, which does not belong to x anymore. Okay? This is because of the pro discrete topology. Let me repeat. If you have a proper subshift, then at some point, the language of x misses some word. Okay? There is some word which does not belong to x. So I can write it this way. So the language of x. So this will be all possible words of length and zero. If I write something like that, means that one word at least is missing at some point. So what the idea now is that how, how do we prove the strict inequality? So it is a sort of lemma inside the proof. I want to make everything compact. Is you see. If, suppose you have n0 here, then you're, you have the, your word here, then you, have, you take the words of length n0, words of length n0, and so on, and you repeat them. So if you miss this word here, you will miss it here by, uh, um, by uh, equivalence and so on. So the idea is that if you have, so now I repeat the idea, the idea of the continuation of the proof idea, if 
x uh, is such that there exists a sequence of interval, let's be say a sort of regular sequence of intervals. By regular, I mean that there is just one single interval, and you shift them in such a way that they, they form a partition of the hmm? regular, I mean, form a partition. Or maybe you can have some control on the dis finite, the, the distance between, you see, you can have something like that. But the, this distance between consecutive uh, interval is uniformly bounded. Suppose you have something like that, such that when you restrict to this interval, your, your f full shift to this interval, to each of this interval, you have that the cardinality of your um, language, so the, the words that you look, they are all of the same length. Huh? They are less than the uh, cardinality of all, power, all possible words minus one, such that, so when you write uh, the restriction, to each of these in, let me call this i0, i1, i2, here I will have i minus 1. So to each of these ij's, so the, <coughs> the cardinality of this is less than a, they have, say they all, all have length n0. Okay, suppose that you have such a situation, then we shall prove that the entropy of x is less than the logarithm of the cardinality of a. Okay, so we will prove exactly this. Okay, which is surely the case in our situation. Okay, now let m be positive integer and perform the Euclidean division. So I write m is equal to k n0 plus r, where the remainder r is clear between r0 and n0. OK. So now, let's look at L m of x. L m of x. So this will be L, K, let me take cardinalities, okay? Like K and 0 plus R of X. So now, a word, uh, I can majorize, this, majorize it in this way. L and 0 X to the power K times, then for the remainder, I take A, to the power r, okay? So, for example, I have m, so I have, so here I have a word here in L and 0 of x, here another one, here another one, here another, and what remaining I majorize with any possible word which I can write here of length r, okay? Okay, now let's take logarithms. So logarithm of L M of X. This is less or equal than K log of L and zero of X plus R log of A. Now I use this this pro, this um, this fact, and I replace it here. So I get k log, and let me write this actually. So I, I will go slightly quicker. A power n zero times one minus cardinality of a 
minus n0, okay? This is the same thing, okay? So uh, I can write log of this, which will be n0 log of a plus log of 1 minus the cardinality of a powers minus n0 plus r log a. So now I have kn0 plus r kn0 plus r times log of a, which is exactly m log a. And then this quantity here, look, this is positive number, okay? It's less than one because I take the, uh, the reciprocal of, uh, of cardinality of a, okay? So one minus something is smaller than one. If I take the logarithm, I, I get a negative number. So this quantity here is negative. So let me call this negative number minus c. So which is, uh, so I can write minus kc. So let me repeat, c is minus log of one minus cardinality of a minus n zero, okay? And, and this is positive. Okay, so now let me take the, um, let me divide by m. Uh, excuse me, uh, blah, 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 blah. plus this, no, no, r, and when I, okay. Okay. I, I sum up, it comes m, okay? Mm -hmm. Now I divide by m, so I get log <laughs> of um, L M of X divided by M is less or equal than log A minus K over M C. Now, look, I have K over M is the same thing as k over kn0 plus r, which surely is less than equal than k over kn0, so 1 over n0. On the other hand, if I take r to be equal to n0, I get k times k plus 1. Okay? So now, I have to majorize, but I have a negative sign. Huh? Times n zero plus one. Uh, yes, w one over n zero. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Okay. So. No. Uh, uh, yeah. Times uh, n zero plus one. Uh, oh no no no. Huh? You're right. Okay. Yeah, yeah, but you're right. I, I, I first forgot it to write, okay? So this is log of cardinality of A minus K over K plus 1, 1 over N, 0. And now, you see, when you take the limb soup, so limbs, huh? Yes, time C, thank you. When you take the lint soup, this gives you the entropy of x. And this, well, it tends to 1. Okay, this is anyways. And, and c is positive, but you have a negative 1. So it is less than the logarithm of a. And this ends the proof. Okay, well, this is simple. It's not just... So now the, we arrive to the core of, the, of this mini course, and the main result is this theorem, which is called the Garden of Eden theorem. The name of a biblical origin, of course, Garden of Eden. How do you say in Russian? Sad Eden? Sad Edena. Sad Edena. 
Okay? It, it comes from the fact that it gives a necessary and sufficient condition for a cellular automaton to be surjective. And the way it was stated at the very beginning, you see, when, when you have a cellular automaton, any map which is not uh, surjective, a self map of the endomorph an endomorphism of the shift map from A power Z to A power Z, which is not surjective, then you have some configurations which can only appear at, uh, at the beginning, because if you think of the conf uh, uh, of the cellular automaton as a dynamical system, when you repeat your cellular automaton, then some configurations appear up, do appear only at the beginning of your process, and then you can find them anymore. And this is like the Garden of Eden, <laughs> which we lost <laughs> many years ago. Okay, then uh, let me give you this uh, de definition. This <laughs> so if I have a map, in our case, I will think of a cellular automat, but it's not necessarily. So from A power Z to B power Z, then I say that it is pre-injective, pre-injective, if the following holds. So if we think of pre-injectivity as a weaker form than injectivity. So if the following holds, suppose you have two configurations, x1 and x2 in a power z, such that they have the same image. But in addition, they agree, they disagree only in a finite subset. So n in z, such that x1 in n is different from x2 in n. So this set is finite. Okay? So if this holds, then necessarily x1 is equal to x2. Okay? So if you don't put this condition, the hypothesis, this is just injectivity you, you are used to. So we relax this condition by saying, OK, we just check if for configurations, you may say, almost equal. So they differ only at finitely many points. The map is injective. And this is the condition that I am introducing here, which is called pre-injectivity. OK, so now the theorem is as follows. Let tau from a power z to a power z, you could actually state it with b power z, but this uh, is not convenient. So let's write it that way. A cellular automaton. Then the statement is that tau is, in, is subjective, so there are no garden of hidden configuration, if and only if it is projected. So let me write it in the following way. Then the following are equivalent, and I write. Let me use the same. Uh, OK. So first one, tau is surjective. Second condition, the entropy of tau of x is equal to log of the cardinality of a. And the third condition is that tau is pre-injective. OK? What is S? Uh, what? What is S? Where, in, in, in what? Uh, in, in what? Tau of and this? Yeah, but X will define, I mean, the will define for a subset, right? Tau of X? Uh, can you repeat the question? You are asking for this? Uh, this well, the X was, the end will define for uh, a subset. No, 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 yeah, 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 X. A power Z, I'm sorry. Yeah, 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 of course. Entropy of the image of the, yeah, of course. Entropy of A or Z is equal to log of A. Yes, yeah, sorry. OK, so I repeat, the, 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 the main theorem is the equivalence between subjectivity and pre-injectivity. As we shall see, passing through entropy is a, a major way of proving it. And we will follow this 
line. Okay, so I claim this is trivial. Okay, if tau is subjective, tau of a power z is a power z because it is subjective. And as we saw as the first example, the, its entropy is equal to the logarithm of a. So there is no problem. Now, yeah, no, no, but uh, now I have a power z. Eh? Yeah, it's better. Uh, one can, but it's nicer this way. Okay, first thing. Exactly. In fact, suppose uh, that uh, tau of a power z is less, is smaller. Okay. So this is the subshift. Okay. So you have you call it a, a y. Okay. So if the entropy is, uh, if it, uh, wait a moment. If it, yeah, 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 in fact, if it is not subjective, this is a proper subshift. And then, by the proposition that we proved, then this is less than the logarithm of A. So, we have already proved the equivalence between the two. So, what are only left is to see the relation between preservation of the entropy and projectivity. Okay? Okay. So, let me just follow the same order of ideas. Okay, so now I, I, let me prove that 3 implies 2, or equivalently, that the negation of 2 implies the negation of 3. Okay, so let's suppose, so let me call y. Let me see if it is better to call it y. Yeah, 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 okay. y is a tau of a power z. So we have the entropy of y is less than the logarithm of a. Okay? Uh, as before, we can suppose that m to be equal to the interval from minus m to m is a memory set for the cellular automaton tau. So I remind you what it means, that if you are in a point, the value of the point depends only on the, on the values in the interval the point minus m and the point plus m that you have in the configuration you apply tau. Okay? Okay. So now let me look at the cardinality of the language ln plus 2m of y, which Mm -hmm. As before, I can write, the, I can majorize by ln of y times the cardinality of a power to m. I take logarithms, so ln plus 2m of y is less than logarithm of ln of y plus 2m logarithm of a. I divided by n. Okay? So, when, n's, when n increases, Okay, this tends to zero. This, as a limb soup, gives you the entropy of y, which I remind you, by hypothesis, is less than the logarithm of the cardinality of a. So, it follows.
tolos, that there exists n0 such that the logarithm of the cardinality L n0 plus 2m of y divided by n0 is less than the logarithm of a, of cardinality of a. OK? Which is equivalent to saying that L n0 plus 2m of y is less than a to the power n0. Let's write it that way. OK? Okay. Okay. Now, let Z be the set of configurations. such that x of n so is equal to a fixed number a0, so uh, fix a0 in a. Let z be the configurations which are constant for every n outside z minus the interval minus m and 0 plus m. OK, let me check if it is correct. Uh, no, just one. Mm, I'm sorry. Just outside 1 and 0. This suffices, OK? So I repeat. Here you have 1. Here you have n0. So here you have, it is constant. The value is always a0. And so on. So this is, this is z. And clearly, the cardinality of z is equal to a power n0. And therefore, I have l n0 plus 2m of y is strictly less than the cardinality of z. OK, now, let me observe the following. That, moreover, if I take two configurations in Z, this set of configurations, so let me call them Z1 and Z2 in Z, if I look at their images, tau of Z1 and tau of Z2, you see, if I take the image of these two, they will be the same from 1 minus m and n0. <laughs> so before here and after here. Why? Because if I stay here in the image, all the, I have, the value here is determined only from the at most m on the left and m on the right. Here they are all the same. 
for both configurations. Because the only place where they can change Z and Z1, Z1 and Z2, is only here. So if I move on the left, on the right, or I move on the left at, at least M, the values are the same. In fact, they are constant. Is it clear? I repeat. So Z1 and Z2 belong to Z. They can only differ here, either here or here. But here it's constant, and here it's constant. Here it's constant, here it's constant. So wh when I apply tau to, to each of these configurations, the value from n0 plus m increasing, or from 1 minus m decreasing, are exactly the same. Because the, 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 the neighborhood of the each point in the, in the image has the same source in both cases. OK? Is it clear? OK. So they are the same in z minus the interval 1 minus m and 0 plus m, and z minus 1 minus m and 0 plus m. Indeed, I, I repeat, they are constant there. Okay, because it's the image of a constant here is constant, the configuration, so the image will be again constant. Okay, so what it means, let me write it here, thus the cardinality of tau of z of the, you see, is equal to L, what is it, n plus 2m of tau of z, because to determine the image of z, you only need to restrict yourself here, because outside it's constant. So the, the possible values of your configurations only depends on here. So you have this equality, which in turn is less than ln plus 2m of y, because z is a subset of x. When you apply tau, then it is tau of z is contained in y, which is tau of the full shift. So it is clearly contained here. And by hypothesis, well, by our previous arguments, this is strictly less than the cardinality of z. So now, you see, we have tau of z, cardinality, is strictly less than cardinality of z. So that this means, that is, that implies that there exists, there exists two configurations in z, distinct, such that tau of z1 is equal to tau of z2. Okay? If you have a set of a given cardinality and the image has a smaller cardinality, then the, the map cannot sense two distinct elements to the same one. Sort of pigeonhole principle, if you want. Okay? But now, this leads to a contradiction. Because Z consists of all, as we call the, uh, um, we call this uh, almost equal configurations, because they are distinct at most in this finite interval. So these configurations are all almost equal. So we found two distinct configurations, which are almost equal, and whose image is the same. And this contradicts the projectivity. Okay? This contradicts projectivity. Huh? Since Z1 is almost equal to Z2. Okay? So, I repeat. We started by um, an inequality at the level of entropies, and we got that tau cannot be projective. Okay? Excuse me? You have 
Yes, here. Yes, thank you. Okay. Okay. Now we are left with the remaining implication. So now we want to prove that 2 implies 3. 2 implies 3. And we will again prove the negations. So the negation of 3 implies the negation of 2. And so we start by tau is not preinjective. So we can, by definition, there exist two configurations distinct such that the set, let me call it uh, F, the, the, the points in Z such they, where they differ, well, I can say, I can. It's not necessary to point it out here. So I have two configurations such that F, the set of points where they differ, is finite and not empty. Is finite and not empty. Not empty is the same thing as saying that they are distinct. Okay? Now, a little just to simplify our life. You see, if x1 of n is different from x2 of n, since uh, uh, and such that, I mean, of course, and such that tau of x1 is equal to tau of x2. Okay, of course. Okay. Now, remember that tau is equivariant. So, if we shift x1 and x2 suitably, the image will be the same because by equivalence. Okay? And we can suppose that such an f is the interval. So by suitably shifting x1 and x2 if necessary, we can suppose that f is equal to 1, 2, and 0. Okay? This is the, the part where the two configurations disagree. Also, let m, the memory, the memory of tau. Yeah, because you see, if you shift, if you shift x1 by m, it means this is m of x1 of n is different from m of x2 of n is the same thing as saying that x1 of n plus m is different from x2 of n plus m. Okay? So. I can believe that uh, f of n is contained in this set. Uh, yeah. But? So, so, you see, you have, suppose that your f is here for x, x. Okay? X x1 and x2. If you shift them, then your, your set f will, will shift accordingly. So uh, you can always yeah, fit it holes. in. Huh? But it can have uh, holes. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's contained. I'm sorry. Okay. I agree. I agree. Okay. It's contained it here. I agree. I agree. Thank you. No, no, no. Of course, you're right. It is contained there. OK. Then, in addition, okay. Mm -hmm. So, now let us set 
E to B something like the interval minus 2M plus 1 up to uh, N0 plus 2M, something like that. Okay? I take a big interval E. So I have it here. This is E. And let me call it, in fact, A0. And let me repeat this interval many times. So here I have E1, E2, E minus 1, E minus 2, and so on. So this is where I have the two configurations disagree. Okay? So in fact, here I would have my F, which will be contained here, but I take slightly large. So now I define a subset Z of A power Z as follows. So this is the set of all configurations such that when I restrict to some of these EIs, it is different from let me explain eh? ZI X one restricted to EI. So ZI is the let's say this is zero, this is the what you have to shift by so this okay I shift to get from E0 to E1 I shift by Z1 then from here to here I shift by Z it will be a multiple of a given quantity okay so what what this is just uh, symbolism but what it means these are all the configurations such that when I look at here, it is different from the pattern. Remember, P, which is equal to X1 restricted to E0, is the pattern with support E0. It's the restriction of the configuration here. So it's a word. Okay? So here is just um, uh, heavy notation to say, I take all possible by infinite words such that if I look at here, the word is different from this one. The word is again different. The word is again different. Possibly I can find it here. So it is not a subshift. Maybe this forbidden word, I can find it here. But I don't care. I just want that it, on these intervals, the restriction, so it comes a word, it is different from the same word that I read by restricting x1 here. OK? Is it clear? I don't say that the restriction is different from the pattern everywhere. I, I, it's not a defining forbidden word, OK? Defining forbidden pattern, as we saw yesterday. I just ask that in these given pre fixed intervals, which are all of the same length and just shifted one to the other in, in, in such a way that they don't overlap and they cover everything, they, the restriction never meets the word, this forbidden word here. OK? OK. So now, by the, the second proposition, which tells you that a subshift a proper subshift has entropy which is strictly less than the logarithm of cardinality of A, at some point I told you that the idea of proof is that when you have something which is missing in a regular position part of your, um, of, of your configuration, if you have something which is missing everywhere, then its entropy is strictly less. Do you remember that? So this proves by the second proposition, 
we have the same idea of the proof. I, I told you that we reduced to that case during the proof, and this is exactly what we used. We have that the entropy of Z is less than log of A. Uh, let me repeat you once more why. Because you are missing something, at least one pattern here, at least one pattern here, at least one pattern here, and by the prop, yes? Uh, sorry, uh, what is uh, Z in, uh, Excuse me? Is, what is Z in, in the definition? Okay, Z E is what you need to shift. Uh, it's a number. Yeah, it's a number. Uh, yeah, maybe I shouldn't call it Z E. Uh, let, let me call N I. Let N E. It's better. Okay? Okay, it's the number that you need to shift X so, so that you look. Okay? The best way is to think of words. Okay? So that when you look at X1 restricted to E I, this is different from the word which you read in. P, essentially. But P is, uh, you see, you cannot have, if you look at restrict by to E0, uh, as words, huh? as words. I don't, I don't care of the supports. I just look at the sequence of, of letters, so it becomes a word, okay? Okay, so we agreed about this, okay? Is it clear? So now, claim. Claim tau of z is equal to tau of a power z. So this is my claim. So why this is this the case? So maybe I erase here. So we remain close to the point where we are. So you see, let x be in a power z. We want to show, we want to find z in capital Z such that tau of x is equal to tau of z. So if we do that, we clearly have this. Do you agree? I want to show that this set z, which is contained in a power z, properly contained. Indeed, it has a smaller entropy. But if you apply tau, you get the same image. Okay? So for every element x in a power z, so for all possible image, you can recover it as an image of a given a suitable element in z. So how can you do it? Well, now the idea is very simple. You do it locally, okay? You remember, so let me draw the picture, okay? So here you have x, here you have tau of x. And in x you have your intervals. So e minus 2, e minus 1, e 0, e 1, e 2, and so on, okay? So now, Remember that here you have your f contained here, okay? And here you have the analogous part, okay? Let me call f1, f2, here I have f minus 1, f minus 2, okay? Now, if x here does not, if you look at here, it is not equal to p, there is no problem, okay? You define, I want to, now I define, I want to define z here, okay? So, if in the interval e1, there is no occurrence of the forbidden pattern p, let, let's start from e0. So, if here, 
there is no chorus of p, it means that this part of x is already in the corresponding part of z. So I take the same. I don't change anything. Suppose here, in x, I do find the forbidden pattern p. So I cannot use it here, because then z will not, this, this configuration will not be in z. I have to, to avoid it there. But what is the secret now? That here I replace, let me call it x2 uh, restricted to a0, let me call it q. This is the other pattern, okay? So I replace with the corresponding one, which is q, okay? So remember, please, we started with the two configurations which were x1 and x2, okay? So in the, in the interval f here, they are distinct. So I enlarge suitably f, and when I restrict to this, which I called E0, I have a pattern P corresponding to X1 and the pattern Q corresponding to X2, okay? So, if I find the forbidden one, I replace with the other one. If I don't find it, I leave it as it is. So now, since I changed, Z, by construction, does belong to Z. Do you agree? Because wherever I found the wrong part, I replace with the right one. And I do it piece by piece. So now, Z clearly belongs to Z. I repeat once more. To be in Z, the capital Z, you have to check that each, in each, each interval, the word that you read is different from the forbidden one. So if there is no forbid such a word, I, I leave it as it is. If I find it, I replace with the other one. Okay? So by construction, now this element in C. Now, what only remains to show is that they have the same image. But now, I use the fact that x1 and x2 had that property that even um, having this different um, uh, pattern here, they had the same image. Do you remember? Tau of x1, was, this was the beginning of the negation of preinjectivity. So, and I took large enough so that this guarantees that the image of z and the image of x are exactly the same. Okay, this is the real point. So, tau of x is equal to tau of z. If you think this is the simple and smart way to, to do it, okay? But now, we use the, the first proposition by the first proposition that we proved, namely that the cellular automaton does not increase the entropy. So you have that entropy of tau, um, tau of z is less or equal to the entropy of z. So this was equal to the entropy of tau a power z. And now I remember we, we proved that the entropy of z is less than the logarithm of the cardinality of a. And so we proved that the condition mm, here is not satisfied either. So if it is not preinjective, we, you cannot have equality at the level of entropies because the entropy of the image is less than the logarithm of A. Okay? So we complete all possible implications and this gives us the end of the proof of this theorem. So now, since we have a few minutes more, maybe I want just to, to give you other few comments and applications, okay? Now, a corollary is that if you have a cellular automaton, which is injective, 
then it is surjective. Okay? Why? Because injective clearly implies pre-injectivity. It is a stronger form. So it is, if it is injective, a fortiori it is pre-injective. And the Garden of Eden theorem guarantees that every pre-injective cellular automaton is indeed subjective. Okay? Then I want to make other comments related to what we have seen. Uh, let's say, let tau be a, as before, a bijective cellular automata. Then the inverse map is also a cellular automaton. This is an important fact. If you take some books in some some books in symbolic dynamics, they give you a direct proof of this. This was in fact proved by some uh, uh, computer scientists only in this way. It's, it's, uh, but this is trivial after Curtis Handlund theorem. So proof, you see, first observe that the inverse map of equivariant map is also equivariant. Okay? First observe that tau inverse is also equivariant. Okay? Repeat. The inverse of an equivariant map is also equivariant. Moreover, you see, by compactness, of the, of the shift space, of the full shift, tau inverse is also continuous. OK? So by the Curtis Hedlund theorem, tau inverse is a cellular automaton. So this, I repeat, you can give a proof of this statement just by using the, the memory sets and so on. But the topological way of looking at it is much, is much better. So this completes the part about the Garden of Eden theorem and related things. Let me check if there is something else I wanted to say. Uh, Stas, what do you think? Should I start the new argument which I was supposed to speak about tomorrow because I have to four minutes or you think no. it's better to stop? I think it's better to stop. Okay. Okay, so tomorrow, I just announced, I'm going to introduce the class of sophic shifts, which can be introduced by matter of uh, so-called so automata. And we will prove a, a theorem which characterizes sophic groups in terms of cellular automata. Okay, and then we will see some further things.